Hi, everybody, and greetings from Tel Aviv. Uh, good morning to you, and thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, hopefully by now, I hope everybody has already had their morning coffee. My name is Gidi Arlesberg, and I had product marketing and biz dev for Audio Codes Voice AI and Voca. And today I also have the big pleasure to co-host this webinar with um, Yossi Zada, VP and Business Line Manager of the Audio Codes One, One Voice Operation Center and Advanced Routing Manager Solutions. And in our context, Yossi is also heading product management for Audio Codes Voice AI and Voca. But so just before we start, we can't really do a webinar these days without saying COVID at least once, right? Well, indeed, you know, COVID brought many new challenges and pain points for us all. Um, tons of video calls uh, that we need to handle. And back-to-back -back online meetings, it's also quite a struggle, right? But if I, I think if there's one, you know, one meme, yeah, that really tells the story, it's this one right here. So I'm sure many of you already saw it. Uh, it's a great joke, but I think especially here with an audience of so many IT people, I'm sure you all feel it just as we do, and it's real. You know, digital transformation is really, is it, honestly, you know, it's really picking up during, during this time. Um, and another thing that really picked up during these COVID times, it's, it's, it's digital transformation overall, but it's, it's also, you know, zooming into phone calls, they've been increasing a lot during COVID. So look at these numbers from Accenture. We have almost 60% more people getting customer service from a phone line during these days. And, at this, and we see the same increase in the amount of people who go to, to their phone as a first choice for customer service. But actually, that was always the case with phone calls, even before COVID. So this is a report that Microsoft releases each and every year uh, about the, the communication habits of, of consumers. Um, and this, this is a graph that shows um, the top communication, the, the preferred communication channels for consumers when they need customer service. And we can see that even way before the COVID times, uh, people, you know, when they need customer service, they just pick up the phone um, and, and want to be served over, over a phone call. Um, and, and that's a trend that we see for, for, for many years in the past and many years probably to follow. But what actually happens when we as you know, consumers actually pick up the phone and call up a company, usually what we get is an IVR. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term, IVR stands for Interactive Voice Response. And it's that you know, good old menu uh, that invites you to press, you know, press one for that, press two for that, press three for that. And apparently, uh, you know, each and every one of us probably, you know, has some opinion about those systems. But here is here is our collective opinion about it. So this is a Vonage, uh, Vonage survey uh, based on U.S. consumers, and we can see that uh, so many people say that IVR makes for a poor experience, which is, you know, poor is quite a strong word, right? And if we look at the feelings that are behind it, we can see uh, quite a lot of, of, of negative uh, feelings out there and, and a lot of frustration. And when we want to understand where this frustration is coming from, um, it's, it's, it's the, exactly the same you know, frustrations that each and every one of us feel when you know, engaging with the system. So I, I can tell you, I, I was not surprised when I saw this. 65% of people say uh, that they're afraid the reason they're calling for might not be listed in the menu. Um, and so many people think that they're forced to listen to relevant options. Sometimes we just want to speak with an agent and that this you know, IVR really uh, blocks us from doing that. 
And also the menus are long and sometimes we need to navigate in sub menus and repeat our choice. So overall, a pretty um, tiring and tedious experience of working with an IVR. Now, what happens when we take this IVR experience and we move it to a voice driven experience? Two very cool things happen. One thing is that all of a sudden, you as the company that is serving the customers, you don't need to choose a limited amount of destinations to make accessible to your callers. So since you are working with voice, you're no longer limited by 10 digits that are you know, used for an IVR, for the classic IVR. Um, and so you can fit in as many destinations as you'd like uh, in, in a voice interface. And another cool, very cool thing that happens is that we let the callers, all of a sudden the callers become very specific about where they actually, what they actually need and where they need to get to. So a typical, you know, a, a specific choice that before a voice interface was not even apparent to the caller, all of a sudden when you ask the caller, you know, how can I help you? Uh, you let the caller be very, very specific about what they need. And that's a good thing because it means they can get really quickly to where it is that they need to. These uh, very cool advantages of moving to a voice experience on the main line, completely automated, is aside to the obvious perk of providing a very friendly and intuitive way of letting people just talk and focus, you know, on talking, which is what you would expect to be doing um, on a phone call. And VOCA, indeed, you know, we, we are here to talk about VOCA. So VOCA is, is, is a conversational IVR that comes with a built-in voice interface to handle all of these incoming calls from customers, figure out their request and get it to the right place, whether it be departments, contact persons, branches, or even automating general information requests. I will get more into that soon. Um, we, we, we just put VOCA on your main line um, and let the caller just say what it is that they need and we get the call to the right place. Of course, VOCA also supports DTMF. So as a fallback, we can always um, ask the caller to press digits if we didn't, if we weren't sure what it is that they really need, or if we see that they struggle for some reason with the system. Um, so it's it's voice driven, but you always have the DTMF as a fallback. And the good thing with VOCA is that it's very, very flexible and very, very easy to customize. So it comes with an out of the box uh, basic experience that runs very smoothly uh, in a very short time, Yossi will talk about that later on. Um, but anything you would like to do from a very basic to a, to a more complex and rich call flow, uh, all that is possible with VOCA quite, quite easily using the web management interface, which we will show later on. Uh, and that obviously includes uh, the different voice announcements and prompts, the content for voice recognition lists, all of that completely uh, uh, self-managed and easily self-managed through uh, the VOCA web management interface. And another thing to note about VOCA, it's not only good for your external callers. Um, if you have internal users that are working on the field or maybe just on the go wanting to make a phone call, with VOCA, uh, they can just use, they just have an easy way of getting a call out, having this one a uh, number that through that number, they can just say whatever it is that they need and get a call out internally. So a great, um, a great experience for your customers and external users, but definitely also a very handy experience for the internal users. So in VOCA, we have a built-in set of uh, IVR um, elements that come right out of the box. So we did a lot of uh, work already for you. Um, and I'm talking about things like 
handle calls differently by different working hours, support different aliases that people may use. So in this example, uh, we have someone saying tech support, we would know they actually meant technical support if that's how you uh, register that in your database. Uh, we would know to trigger automatically a question about a sub-department in case the user uh, uh, needs to further navigate down the menu. You don't need to configure that. That's, that happens automatically. We can also steer calls to contact uh, office extension or mobile device. And when we have duplicate names, we would handle those automatically. We would even know to hunt a contact person through different devices. So if you called up and you need a contact person and they're not answering on their office extension, Boca will know to uh, transfer this call automatically to their mobile. Of course, in the branch experience, uh, supporting uh, sub, sub uh, branch navigation and aliases for branches as well. Um, and as I briefly mentioned, uh, automate um, general information requests uh, that might come using either a text message or a voice announcement. Um, I, I will show more about that uh, later on. And a key part of the VOCA solution, in the heart of the VOCA solution actually, is the web management interface. And what's great about the web management interface is that all of the management and configuration of the service is done from here, as well as a very rich analytics section, um, which I will show in the next slide. And the good thing about this backend is that, obviously when we, when we deploy VOCA, we do it with IT. But the great thing is that IT, once the system is up and running, can hand it off to people uh, outside of the IT department. So you definitely need, don't need to be any tech expert to manage VOCA and to optimize it and to configure it further. And that's a great thing, especially in these days. You know, we talked a bit about digital uh, transformation and IT departments are so busy these days. So. Um, here, here, is a, here is a management tool um, that can really be operated by anybody who can read and write pretty much. Uh, up to the degree of, uh, you know, adding new terms uh, for the speech recognition with simple free text, um, unlimited entries for, for the speech recognition content. And as I mentioned, a very rich analytics section, which gives you, you know, all the details that you need about you know your peak times, the number of channels you're using, um, what kind of uh, con how many people requested department X, how many people uh, requested contact X, and uh, this goes down all the way to the degree of actually being able to listen to what users to how users are engaging with the system. So here we would. You know, if, if there's a call that wasn't handled properly, uh, we would, you know, it would be very easy to go in here, see what the caller said, and just cover it over free text, hit the save button, and it, and it works. Um, so a very strong management uh, interface, but at the same time, very, very easy to use. I will now pass the ball to Yossi. Uh, to talk about about our voice recognition technology and the VOCA deployment process. Uh, hi, this is Yossi. Uh, happy to be here with you today. And by the way, I am located in Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv. I am in the Holy City. So, as Gidi says, that in, we in Audio Code, we have our own voice recognition technology and, and engine. It's a choice to do that, okay? Because there are so many engines today in the cloud with the AI, with the, all the big player has their own voice recognition. However, our voice, our own engine is based on state-of-the-art uh, capabilities. It is very, very accurate, and I will say why it's so accurate, and par with all the bo uh, big uh, voice uh, recognition players. Our accuracy is 
95, 95% and above. And one of the advantages that you own the voice recognition is that you can, of course, deploy it in the cloud, on-premise, VM, hardware, and then I will talk about it later, how exactly well actually making it a complete solution with other audio code uh, products as well. Another uh, things that, that I can say that because we are owning the, uh, we are owning the technology, uh, we have a very well unique terminology. I mean that things like uh, contact names, product names, brand names, branches, we have, you know, the hands on the wheel. We can really guide our own engine to work well with those custom terms. I mean that all the close grammar or close vocabulary, this is our game. We are expert in that. We have uh, trained our engine to work with so many closed grammars, so we are getting almost 100% accuracy most of the time. Our technology today natively supports uh, English, US, Spanish, German, of course Hebrew, but I, I don't know how many of you is interested in Hebrew. Uh, for additional languages uh, support, we are using the Azure speech uh, cognitive services, and uh, we can get extra languages uh, coverage. Lately we have added the English UK as well. Next slide, please. You know, in the last 26 years, we are, you can call us the city plumbers. We can connect anything to everything. We are active in all the telephony scenes, you name it, all the segments, all the verticals, contact centers, service providers, enterprises, IPVBXs, analogs, UC platform, all the UC platforms, and of course, contact centers as well. So we have actually hands everywhere. And th this, this can assist a lot to work. And then I will explain in a few minutes how exactly, I will give the team's example, how exactly the, the fact that we have direct, our leading direct routing SBC with teams helps connecting VOCA easily. To teams. In, te in terms of uh, voice prompt and announcement, we also have uh, we have you covered with, uh, with uh, there as well. We have pre-recorded voice uh, prompt recorded professionally and ready to go out of the box uh, prompts as well. Of course, that you can always customize your own experience and use your own prompts or even record them on demand from within VOCA. And finally, you can even uh, use our own TTS, okay, text-to-speech engine, if you don't want to work with the uh, recordings at well. And we, we have an excellent TTS, which actually, it's like a human voice. Of course, we are connected to our Active Directory to get all the users' information and other information as the security groups and other information about users that you can use. and. Uh, if you are not connected, connected to Active Directory, everything can be loaded by using a CSV file or any other way uh, that you can get information about uh, permissions and uh, user information that you can use in order to do all the reports that uh, uh, Giddy shows before. As a form mentioned, uh, as we, uh, since we can deploy on-premise, we are fully secured. I mean that there are verticals that don't want their voice go to the to the cloud so we have we are using uh, several encryption methods along with the uh, uh, signal path and uh, of course uh, GD, GD, uh, gdpr compliance and again i would like to emphasize that we in audio codes are as i said we are the expert with closed grammar closed vocabulary and we have trained our uh, voice recognition system in the last 10 years to recognize names, departments, and everything, and that makes our system different, much more accurate than any other uh, system in the market. Next, please. 
So, as I said before, you can deploy VOCA uh, from the cloud, VM, uh, with the own uh, audio code hardware, uh, hardware as well, with the SBC, and uh, then to connect it to the telephony, you can use all our portfolio. I mean that our SBC, uh, our gateways, hardware SBC, virtual SBC, and even uh, the VOCA appliance with an SBC all in one piece of hardware. Our Median 800, of course, has an OSN, and on, on that we are running our uh, applications, and VOCA is one of the applications that we are running on the OSN, included in the uh, Median 800 or any other uh, SBC that uh, has the option to have OSN. However, if you would like to VOCA, I mean that however you would like the VOCA. So you have all, all the options, the VOCA and the SBCs. And finally, as I mentioned, you can connect to this anything. We, we can connect to, to anything, to the UC, Teams, IPvX, Analog PVX, contact centers, even directly to a C-plank. You can connect us easily. And lately you have added the Web, WebRTC integration. I mean that uh, Giddy uh, mentioned it before, that you can, you can have a click-to-call uh, to get to the VOCA easily, and you can see that uh, sign there in the left uh, rectangle. The real beauty is that once you know how you would like the VOCA to be deployed for you, it's a matter of one day to get it ready, already up and running. We are really have so many built, built-in features helping you to get the VOCA to work out of the box. Of course, you can do any kind of customization advanced con uh, configuration later on, but definitely no project. It is not, a, you know, weeks of projects. This is a true out-of-the-box product that can go live quickly. Next, please. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Teams. You know, I said that you can connect to any system. But usually what what takes time for us is, you know, to, 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 to do the qualification and to learn from the other side, what is the exactly uh, the information that you would like to get about the contact center or the IPvX or the PvX, and sometimes even the IT in the other side doesn't know that. And so we have to go there and take the information, how exactly to connect. And as you know, our SBC can connect with everything. However, when it comes to Teams, it gets much more easier. Why? Because you, our own SBCs, they are our own uh, direct routing SBCs, part of Teams. And then you have an SBC which is connected to VOCA. It, it's a streamlining of connection. I mean that with a simple uh, pre-built uh, script that we have, Few clicks and VOCA is connected to the to the direct routing SBC. It's kind of instead of having two SBCs, you have a single SBC. All the connection is automated, of course. And as Giddy showed before, and uh, you have all the reports, all the analytic tools to improve the recognition rate. Everything is in the VOCA with Teams. It's kind of single point of glass of management of your IVR. Next, uh, please. The VOCA actually is one of the teams, it's one of the team's user, and you can put it as a speed dial, you can call it from, from teams it, uh, to, to call any other uh, site, any other departments in your organization, any team member that you would like to uh, with uh, voice, you don't have to dial to anyone, to anyone. Everything is in Teams as as part of Teams. Okay, next slide, please. And let's go a little bit more technical. As you can see here, we have the direct routing. Okay, we have our own SBC here in the left side. The customer, the RSBC. And you have VOCA, VOCA outside. Now, when you get a call into your organization, comes to the direct routing SBC, the SBC routing table is pre-configured that every call that calls to goes to the, the 
the Devoka doesn't have to go to teams. It goes directly to be, you know, to do, to do the extra routing. Okay, we have kind of here and the serial routing. First, you have the SBC routes to the Voca. Voca gets the voice recognition, understand to whom in the organization you would like to direct the call, send refer to the SBC, and the SBC goes directly to Teams, and then Teams, you know, to where actually to direct the call according to the information that it gets from the Voca. Okay, so it's so easy. It's kind of extraterritorial uh, application, but it's part of Teams. And every time that you would like to call from to someone in your organization, in the organization itself, again, Teams directs the call to the SBC, to VOCA, then you get the, the uh, VOCA, you can do your uh, IVR, the voice recognition, then you get the, the number that you have to call internally, and it goes again into the organization. I mean that it's part of Teams, easily connected, we can do that in few hours to connect teams to connect voca to teams in further uh, versions we are going to actually you will be able to configure teams from the app store in teams and not only that to see all the gui of voca in in teams itself next uh, next slide please uh, back to you gidi Yes, thank you, Yossi, for that. Um, so we're reaching towards uh, towards the end. I thought we thought it would be cool to show you. Uh, we want to give a glance of two uh, brand new features that we have uh, within Voca that we we believe are quite cool. So one of them is for the case of general information requests. So imagine that you have a caller that just needs an address or needs opening hours, or any other type of general information. Well, what we've done in VOCA, um, this is, by the way, this is a new UI that, um, that we're, we're doing, uh, that we're launching uh, in, in the next uh, version. So what you see here is how you would configure um, a, de a specific department to be handled. In this case, it's uh, the customer support department, which is under uh, the parent department support. And I did see a question uh, about uh, prompts um, that I answered to, uh, and Yossi covered it as well, but just to close the loop, here is where you would either record right from VOCA um, a prompt, or of course, upload any you know recorded prompt that you already have, or just use our default uh, built-in prompts. And but we're here to talk about the general information automation. So in this case, we might have someone that just needs to get a, a, a opening hours, right? So one thing we, we can do is to play a, a voice prompt in exchange to that request. So we don't really need to transfer this call to an agent that spells out the opening hours. We would play a prompt that says, something like you know thank you for contact contacting customer support um our opening hours are so and so another really cool thing that we can do is to automate a, and, and send out a text message message so you would just choose the action send sms and literally easy as typing that uh, text message and that's it this message will be sent to anyone who's asking for opening hours within customer support. So just to illustrate the different options that uh, we are now providing to automate general, general information requests, and we saw this need from many of our customers. Another cool and brand new feature that we are adding, uh, that we've added actually, is an integration uh, between WebRTC technology to VOCA. So for those of you who are not familiar with WebRTC, uh, WebRTC would be the way to make uh, a call right from within your web browser, rather than having to use your phone to make a phone call. So just to illustrate this further, um, this is the contact us section in the audio codes website. And let's say I came in here and I wanted to make a call to the headquarters 
um, I would be able to just literally click the button from within the website and reach VOCA. Um, and there, there will be the conversational IVR that will ask me, you know, what is it exactly that I need? And of course, the good thing about it is that it's completely seamless for the user. They're sitting um, in front of the web browser and we would like them to stay in the browser. The, the brands want them to stay, the companies want them to stay in the company website. Um, so here's a, here's a very useful way of, of keeping them there and providing them um, with it, their favorite one, one communication channel. This. May I say one yes. comment? That sure. The fact that you are using WebRTC, it's very, very important for voice recognition because WebRTC uses Opus, managed Opus, and excellent quality. And when you get an excellent quality to your voice engine, of course, the recognition rates goes up immediately. So this is another advantage that you have when using WebRTC. And the WebRTC quality is great, really. Sometimes even greater than a lot of applications that you are using along the day. This is a yeah, great definitely. advantage that you can have it, the voice quality, actually. Thanks, Yossi. That's, that was indeed an important one. Um, yeah, and, and, and last thing that, that we wanted to emphasize with, with the Volca and WebRTC is that obviously you could have, you know, multiple instances of this button, uh, but associated to different services within your website. So if you have, you know, a sales section, a support section, and so on, uh, you could direct the click to call button to reach the relevant place within the IVR, within Volca um to 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 you know provide the user with the experience that they need in context to the page where that they're you know that they're looking at right now and lastly is that of course this button is completely you know any branding or design graphic design uh different graphic design that the customer would might want of course um that's something that that we support and just to open your mind a bit um think about you know, if you went to an e-commerce uh, website and had a click to call button, um, surely um, so many people would, would find it that useful. Um, and also when you have the classic case of, you know, sometimes you want to figure out something for in a, in a store. Um, and yeah, you know, when I see something like this, actually, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking of so many people, uh, especially elderly population, right? Um, that needs to uh, dig for the right phone number, copy to their phone, and it's just everything becomes so much easier when you just have that click to call uh, button right there. And when it's connected Gide, to I, Boca, I'm an old guy, so please don't talk about us. <laughs> it will make it easy for you, Yossi, as well. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, but 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 really, um, it's it's just so handy to have this. You know, people want to talk. And this is just a very easy way of letting them talk from wherever wherever they are. Um, yeah, so uh, we we try to keep things uh, interesting and and short. As a result, we just want to end uh, this webinar with a brand new video case study that that we did together with um, Concord School District. Um, so I'm gonna play the video. Just bear with me. school district is in a small city in New Hampshire. We have roughly 5,000 students uh, when you include our technical center. We have a career and technical center and we have seven school buildings. So we have about a thousand more or less staff members. The, the uh, technology director and the information security officer. So we had a pretty typical um, auto attendant type of menu on the system. Um, we found that um, the admin interface wasn't super friendly, so it was a bit of a struggle to reprogram um, and make changes to it um, mm -hmm. in a school district. I have six IT people so in the whole district. So six mm -hmm. IT people are covering an organization this size. We have yeah. to be really efficient with our time. and. Right. Um, Things that are clunky or hard to use are just really difficult for us. When we actually
actually started converting from short tail to um, Skype for business. Um, and we tested VOCA. I realized all of a sudden that um, I'm, I'm putting myself in the mindset of a parent and I'm a parent. My kids are in a different district, but every time I'm calling that school, um, I'm in the car. <laughs> and so yeah. I'm thinking through and it's really frustrating because I always have to press numbers to get anywhere. And, um, and I'm thinking Super through like, this is not very safe. You know, schools need voice attendance because, you know, it's just not safe for parents or students to be calling their schools while they're driving and having to press numbers. So VOCA kind of um, served that, um, that uh, provided that solution for us. Hopefully we'll find that parents find it safer to use and we'll be able to make our um, administrative assistance more efficient. So again, we don't have a lot of staff and our administrative assistants are super busy. So if we can um, provide parents with a, and community members with a better experience, but also make um, our uh, employees' jobs more um, streamlined, I think that, that that will help a lot. So, and, and our languages are unusual. So we have Nepalese, Kenya, Rwanda, um, um, you know, really some unusual languages in our district that aren't usually um, picked up um, by systems that do translations. So right. that was a big part of my criteria too, was thinking about if you're not a native English speaker and you're calling in, can the system sort of support you and, and help you through it? Um, and um, I like the training aspect of VOCA a lot where, where we can start to train different pronunciations um, as we go. What I love about the interface is the way the receptionist can watch the failures. And that's something we did during testing. I was able to go in and I only sort of briefly touch systems. I sort of, um, I'm very superficial when I look at systems. I don't have the time to dive in like my crew does. And so um, somebody was testing it and I was able to go in and figure out very quickly how to see the tests and see what went wrong each time. Um, so I found it very easy to use. Um, if I can, with the number of tools and systems that we have and the number of things we support and the way every single department in the district is moving towards more and more and more software, the more I can sort of take a system and hand it off to somebody, we implement it, but now you're in charge of it. So if, right. if I can handle, I don't answer phones, so if I can hand it to the people who are answering the phones and they can do the training of the system and it's easy enough, then that's a win for us because that's less time for us to support it. Audio Codes has been wonderful to work with. Um, ever since the beginning of our project, they really have just, some of the products we didn't buy, but Audio Codes has just given us so much time and so much hand-holding, and it's been really fantastic. I don't think we could have done this project without, without them. The support just makes me feel really good about the company. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Pam. Have a good Bye -bye. one. Bye-bye. Okay, so thank you again. Uh, everybody for joining us today um, and wish you a good day. Any questions that you have, uh, more than welcome to uh, reach out to us. We'll be happy to, to reply. Thanks a lot and wish you a very good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.